So what are some of your preferred methods of healing attachment wounds and you know what 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 healing can look like in this situation? Well, it, it, it's complicated. It's very complicated mm -hmm. because it has to start in the therapy mm -hmm. because we're attachment figures. So we are going to, we're going to stimulate the traumatic attachments mm -hmm. system. And, and that, that's going to be very confusing to the client because the client will think it's us not the trauma. So it starts with how, how we are. You know, most therapists have been trained to be very relational and to do what we've been taught, create safety for the client. Some of us have been taught to have very clear boundaries with the patient and to say up front, these are the boundaries in the hopes that that will make people feel safer. Some of us have been taught to be unconditionally positive and warm and relational. And if there are too many boundaries as the first introduction, that's usually very triggering mm -hmm. and, and tends to evoke fight and flight. Um, if we are warm and relational, it stirs up the hunger. Remember, trauma is primarily remembered as emotion and body sensation, right? And, and, and sensory experiences. So, so usually when, when we are very warm and relational and positive, it stirs up the, the feeling memory of the hunger for contact. Mm. And so, so often, whether quickly or slowly, we have a client who is desperate for closeness with us. And then, because as I always say, therapy and therapists are very triggering as well as helpful, um, invariably, we trigger that client, sort of that hungry child in the client. Mm -hmm. and, and then we get the wrath of, of the fight response. Mm. So it starts, it starts with our ability to navigate those two poles, right? To find a way to, I think of it as sort of a, a very delicate, um, narrow path. Like I have to be warm and relational enough, but not so warm and relational that I open up this desperate, painful longing for closeness. And I have to have boundaries, but the boundaries have to be so gentle that the client doesn't feel pushed away. Mm, wow. Well, so, and that's fine line. Yeah, and it's really a somatic, it's a somatic way of working. I can't talk about it without triggering the client. So I wanted so, to ask if if, if yeah. we should avoid that, you know, being the, the triggers, or probably it's not possible, right? So just navigating that. Yes, because when you've been hurt by humans, humans are triggering. Yeah. So even with and I always say to clients, I will make every effort not to trigger you, but it will happen in there invariably. Yeah. Um, so, so it's really using your body in a way that says it's safe here. Um, there are boundaries, but there's no, there's no distance. And 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 there's warmth and there is reserve at the same time. So it's really, you know, a lot of it has to do with 
relaxing the shoulders, um, engaging the core, because engaging the core is like engaging a boundary without saying I'm engaging a boundary. Mm. So, mm. so um, using what Stephen Porges calls the social engagement system, mm -hmm. meaning the muscles of the face, the muscles of the eyes and eyelids, the larynx for speaking, mm -hmm. the middle ear for listening, and the turning and tilting movements of the head and neck. So, so I can use the social engagement system, which only comes online if the body feels safe. That's the key. So client comes in, their bodies don't feel safe. And then we communicate using the social engagement system, which is a signal that it is safe. So we're somatically creating a sense of safety rather than trying to do it in words. Um, what, do, what do you mean rather than doing it in words? So saying it in word, like, you know, some of the things I was taught to say to clients were, this is, it's safe here. Oh, yeah. you know, everything you say will be held in confidence, um, except if you are a danger to yourself or others. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. You know, imagine me safe, yeah. a potential friend for the first time and saying, hello, <laughs> I'm Michael. I just want you to know that everything you say is confidential unless, you, right? <laughs> doesn't feel safe no <laughs> right you would certainly turn away and introduce yourself to someone else exactly exactly <laughs> yeah i i remember speaking to the dana about uh the polyvagal theory and she said that if we want to help people regulate we first need to be regulated and work on our regulation because if we feel safe in our bodies other bodies will resonate with it and, and will will start feeling safe as well. So that's what I'm also hearing uh, you speaking about. Right. And she may be, in a way, saying, if the therapist body feels safe, the social engagement system will come on automatically. Mm, yeah, without trying to do so. Right. Yeah. Uh, I also believe that we can intentionally use the social engagement system, even with clients who may um, evoke some anxiety in us. So I'm thinking of, for instance, very angry devaluing clients mm -hmm. who make most of us feel uh, uncomfortable, whether it's um, hurt, anxious, or frustrated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we, we can regulate our bodies, but we can also turn on our social engagement systems so that, so that we're, our bodies say, I come in peace. So I remember having a very, very devaluing client, and I always used to make sure that I tilted my head, I relaxed my shoulders. I had a soft facial expression so that so that my body was saying it's okay nothing's nothing bad is happening yeah. interesting okay okay yeah it's it's good to know which body cues commu are communicating this and, and with like which ones are most important there are probably a couple of that as you say that are most important and the most important is probably voice. So mm -hmm. facial expression, using, but using the facial muscles very consciously, mm -hmm. right? So do we have a, an excited facial expression, a soft facial expression? Mm -hmm. um, do we have, um, you know, you can have eye gaze of all kinds. You can have it's not just a question of eye contact. You know, your gaze can be soft, 
your gaze can sparkle, your gaze can laugh. Um, and sometimes with very difficult clients, I put a little steel in my eye gaze. So my shoulders are relaxed. I may be smiling, but my eyes are steely. Mm. And so that sends a somatic message. You know, don't go too far. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. yeah, wow, that's interesting.